All right, for an extended review of Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment from my perspective, it was just, it was pretty fascinating, man. The way it opens up, it doesn't reveal too much about Raskolnikov, the main character. So it's, he's like a law student who can't really afford to continue his studies. He lives in St. Petersburg, Russia, in the ghetto. And he just kind of uh, stick, keeps to himself. He lives in like a really rundown boarding house, like most poor people do at the time. And his mother and his sister have kind of made sacrifices to put him in law school and to kind of fund it. Well, it's still not enough. So he he like writes this paper and has it published in this journal, which isn't revealed at first, but he has this theory of extraordinary men. Extraordinary men, the law doesn't apply to them. So they can do terrible things and people will praise them for it. If he can do a, a horrible crime in the name of affecting the most people with the uh, greater good, and it's therefore a greater good, he compares it to like Napoleon. This is shortly after the Napoleonic Wars where Napoleon invaded Russia and lost, I don't know, like what is it, like a third of his army or something on his exit. It was just crazy. But basically, you know, Napoleon, he's fought all these wars of conquest, right? It's, it's terrible, terrible shit, but people worship him for it. Right. So if a normal dude uh, commits a murder, it's a heinous crime. But if an extraordinary man kills a million people, he's a war hero. Right. He's a master. He's a statesman. So Raskolnikov, in his mind, he thinks he's an extraordinary man and his circumstances are unjust compared to his intellect and his potential. So he decides that he's going to commit a murder, robbery. There's this pawnbroker lady, and she's just kind of a scumbag, right? She's like a miserly pawnbroker. She makes her living off the misfortunes of the poor. And so he concocts this plan that he's going to murder her and rob her pawn shop. And he does. He's very amateurish about it, though, and the pawnbroker's younger sister, who is really a, a really good person, walks into the apartment while he's committing this crime. So therefore, he has to do what he has to do to try to get away with it and execute the witness. So it kind of plays into the 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 concept of you know, unintended consequences, right? So he thinks that he's going to commit this crime and it's going to, it's going to set him for life. He's going to be able to continue his studies. He's going to be able to affect a lot of people for the greater good. Well, whatever he thinks about this pawnbroker, he thinks she's like a louse uh, on society. Like she's basically a, a parasite to humanity. Well, her younger sister is basically a saint, and he ends up having to kill her too. So, you know, it's just that, you know. Anyways, so it's basically he has unintended consequences. Like he thinks he's going to somehow do a terrible thing and it's going to become a good thing over the course of events. Well, over the course of events, it just commits to more and more atrocities. So... At first, he kind of, he goes into, after he commits this crime, he goes into this kind of psychosis and, you know, um, which is very suspicious. He goes to the police station. He's like the last person. She's a pawnbroker and he has pawns in with her. He has um, items that are in his shop. Well, he is the last person to go and try to retrieve his things from the police station. And so, obviously, that's kind of suspicious. And he didn't really have a good alibi. 
So, anyways, there's lots of situations that come up. Like, basically, Raskolnikov, his mom and his sister are pretty much saints. And um, his his mom, mother is coming to visit him. She writes him this letter and is saying, you know, how she has such high hopes for him. And how her sister is basically self-sacrificing and to assist him with his dreams. And the sister is actually about to marry this dude because basically he's got money and he can help put Raskolnikov through university, through his studies. And so he's like disgusted by this idea, like how dare my sister like sacrifice herself for me, like we're we're better than this, like she shouldn't have to do that. And she shouldn't do that. It's insulting to me. It's below my dignity it's for her to uh, marry for money so that she can help me. It's below her dignity. And it's, it's, it's offensive to our family. It's kind of his idea. And um, yeah, it just goes into so many moral dilemmas like that. Like, is it okay for her to marry this man for his money? He's not a bad guy. It's not like she couldn't love him. She could love him. But she kind of has her own ideas about the situation. And then the dude who she's going to marry, he's got kind of a pompous ass. And then so he thinks he has the right to be that because he has money. You know, he's like, I would prefer my wife to come from. Uh, the lower class from poor people because then I can have more control over her. It just seems more appropriate for my wife to be poor so then I can manipulate her better. So it goes into all of these different moral dilemmas of all these different characters. And it's really fascinating. It really is. And um, it's a classic. Fyodor Dostoevsky. Crime and Punishment. It's definitely worth the read. It's a classic for a reason. Really good book.